welcome everyone to our high noon lecture. Uh, we are really excited today about our presentation because it's coming from in-house, it's coming from within the Western Heritage Center. Our collections queen, <laughs> Cecilia Gavinsky, uh, is sharing a really unique and novel approach to Evelyn Cameron. Uh, we currently have the Evelyn Cameron Montana Photographer exhibit up at the Western Heritage Center through the end of the year. And Cecilia has a little bit different take on Cameron's work. Um, Cecilia is a Billings native, born and raised. She's an MSUB graduate. She earned her Master of Arts History degree from the University of Denver and actually worked as the collections manager and the collections registrar at the Museo de los Americas in Denver before she came back to Billings. She joined the Western Heritage Center in 2016 and of course today is our collections manager and is really the boss downstairs. Um, well, I'll just put it that way. Uh, but today she's sharing with us about Evelyn Cameron and her role as a pioneering wildlife photographer. And let me just say that it's about time Evelyn got the credit she deserves for creating a brand new photography genre. So with that, I will turn it over to Cecilia and she'll take it away. Thanks, Lauren. That was everything I wanted in an introduction. <laughs> okay, so we'll just get started here. Um, many of us have heard of Evelyn Cameron. If you haven't, that's fine too. Um, but for those of us who do know her, she is known as a photographer of Eastern Montana, but she has not been discussed as her role of one of the first wildlife photographers. Okay, we'll get started here. Evelyn was born in England in 1868 to an extremely wealthy family. Her father was in the Indian merchant trading business and he set them up very well off. She was raised with servants who did everything for her, including brushing her hair. Her father unfortunately passed away when she was only four years old, but she had three or four older brothers who would take her outside on hunting expeditions and outdoor activities, sports, things like that, which she preferred over the kind of mundane upper class activities of the British class at the time. Against her family's wishes, she ended up marrying Ewan Cameron, who was a Scottish naturalist he was a very skilled and enthusiastic hunter who had a passion for studying birds. Later, he became a noted ornithologist or a bird scientologist, someone who watches birds and discusses and writes about them, with several articles being published in various British magazines, including the Auk. Evelyn fell in love with his desire for the wildlife. In 1889, the, the couple honeymooned in eastern Montana. They went on a hunting expedition here, of course, and they fell in love with the eastern Montana landscape. Shortly afterwards, they ended up moving to the Terry, Montana area. And their idea for moving here was to raise polo ponies and then send them back home to England. It did not work out very well for the two of them, so they had to figure some other stuff out, which we'll talk about. Together, Ewan and Evelyn documented and studied their new surroundings. So Evelyn was raised in a super upper class family, but she wasn't about that. She found contentment in everyday life and tasked and once wrote, manual labor is all I care about. Her neighbor and homesteading friend, Mrs. Kempton, taught Evelyn everything she needed to know about home, the homestead life. She learned how to cook, clean, garden, raise livestock, sow, and ranch. She did all the domestic chores as well as all of the everything considered man's work. Years later, Evelyn would pass this homesteading knowledge off to Janet Williams, who was from Minnesota, and her family moved to eastern Montana. The Camerons never had any children, so they considered Janet 
they took her in as their own. And she was given all of the Cameron's belongings, including Evelyn's diaries and photography. This is just an example of one of Evelyn's entries in her diaries. It's a Janu from January 1907. It is so meticulously written and all of her entries look like this in her diary. When she would run out of space, she would start to write in between the lines of the letters. She documented everything down for future references from canning to how many plants she gardened and how many plants yielded certain amounts of fruit. Um, she also documented social gatherings, personal happenings in her life and even the weather. So her diaries really give us the first-hand account of what it took to live in the Montana frontier life. So the polo pony business fails miserably. Um, they have to, the cameras need to find other ways of making means. So they end up selling vegetables from Evelyn's garden and started to take in wealthy boarders at their house and kind of show them the bad land landscape of where they were living. One of these boarders ended up teaching Evelyn how to use a camera after she had studied about them and she read everything she could. So she was excited when this boarder showed up to show her how to use the camera. In July 1894, Ewan bought their first camera and she started a photography business where she offered to mount and make albums for the families to use as keepsakes or sell them, send them back home if the people had you know, relatives on the East Coast or in another country. She preferred to use glass negatives, which were very sensitive in prairie conditions. Um, but she preferred it over film because in the glass negatives, you could see the images right away, well, sooner than developing film. Glass negatives also provided a sharper, more detailed negative that re could be repro reproduced several times. Evelyn was soon requested to photograph social gatherings and family events. She was even hired by the Pacific Railroad Company to take charming pictures of the landscape in order to get homesteaders to settle up in the area. She began photographing wildlife on her and Ewan's outings and take her trusty camera, who she called Lexi, on every adventure. This is one of her family portraits. This is probably what she's most well known for. Um, it's how she made all of her money off of photography. Her portraits helped to learn formal qualities of composition, such as framing, light, texture, balance, and the importance of capturing the right pose. Evelyn was especially interested in women homesteaders and ranchers. The Buckley sisters were a neighboring family close to the ranch that she photographed many times. She was impressed by their industrious nature. This is a great image um, that shows the way how how Evelyn balanced her, her figures in her images. You can see there's a natural, can you see that on the screen? There's a natural triangle that kind of happens within the photo. And if she set that up on purpose or just naturally thought it looked good, we don't know, but it's common in a lot of her photography. Evelyn had a fascination and fondness for Germans from Russia. After the Camerons had been in Terry for quite some time, Germans uh, from Russia started to populate the area for land opportunities from the Homestead Act that finally hit Montana in the 1900s. Uh, at first she was apprehensive of the new pioneers, but she became fascinated with them. She describes them as hardworking individuals and was especially impressed with the strength and capabilities of the women. Bride and Groom shows how she can play with light and keep the figures in focus and not bleached out too much. I really like how they have the light behind her and it almost creates a halo over the bride. Evelyn documented all aspects of life in Montana in the late 1800s and early 1900s, not just family photos, social gatherings, and ranch life, this is an image of range horses that framed freely in eastern Montana. 
It's a great example of her documenting the outdoors and it is a beautiful image with another impressive balance within the composition. Evelyn was especially fascinated with Eastern Montana's landscape and fauna. After all, it's what drove her to move here in the first place. The composition is full, but allows the eye to gracefully wander around into the focal point, or vice versa. It was common in this era for scenes to be um, set for outdoor photography. This photo shows a dead coyote that Evelyn posed in front of a wolf cave. Ewan and Evelyn would go on expeditions for Ewan's work, which pushed uh, Evelyn as a wildlife photographer. Photography as we know it today developed in the 1830s. From there, it progressed very rapidly because there was lots of experimenting with different developing techniques and new instruments. Early photographers focused on street photography and portraits. It was really only a profession for the very wealthy or professionals until George Eastman came in and started Kodak in the late 1800s. In this image here, you can see Evelyn with her camera bag. It's pretty big. It was difficult to get camera accessories in the prairie, so she would have to plan way in advance, in months in advance, and accord accordingly to know what she needed for months out. The supplies were then delivered on freight trains. Hauling these cameras in their fragile glass was no easy task, but more manageable techniques allowed for easier travel. Little bit about the history of wildlife. Using photography to document landscapes and species began to become popular in the Victorian era in the 1800s. Rather than going out in the environment, photographers would take still lifes of their pets or taxidermy animals or stage scenes in places like zoos. Publications that discussed animal species where scientists and hobbyists had minimal photos. They were mostly drawings or still lifes. Publications that had too many photographs were seen as picture books and therefore not taken seriously. Photographic safaris were popular in the 19th century, but took an entire crew to handle camera equipment and took over a year to complete. The safaris did push for the popularity of wildlife photography. Here are some of the pillars of wildlife photography, which began with mostly men because it was inappropriate for women to be photographers until the roaring 20s due to social norms. There are some women photographers, but you kind of have to dig deep to find them. The first acknowledgement toward wildlife photography happened in the Bristol Zoo in 1854 where there was um, pictures of lion cubs taken. Ten years later, Frank Hayes photographed the last quagga, which was a type of zebra species. Odomar Anschutz is the first person to photograph wild birds in action in 1884. The Kiriton brothers were naturalists from England that first photographed a bird's nest with eggs in 1892. George Shearer III is perhaps the most well-known. He is the, considered the pioneer, the pioneer of wildlife photography for his flash photography images used in National Geographic in 1906. And we're going to take a look at some of these examples. So this is Ottomar Anschutz. He was a German inventor and photographer. His photograph wild birds in action is from 1884. And this image really pushed for people to go out and document species in their natural habitat and show movement within their pictures. Here are the Kirtan brothers. They um, are photographing their eggs in the nest there from 1892. Um, they developed new methods and tools to photograph animals in the wild, so they were really the experimenters that pushed new developments and techniques into documenting wildlife. They published their first natural history book in 1895 that was entirely illustrated with photographs. Here's George Sherrod III. He was a U.S. representative from Pennsylvania. 
He became friends with Teddy Roosevelt and together they pushed for conservation. That He has a really great story. Um, he used a shutter light to capture these nighttime images, which was pretty new as well. Um, the wildlife genre wasn't really accepted in the mass public until 1906 when George Herrera's photographs were published in National Geographic. Um, two of the National Geographic Society board members ended up resigning in disgust because they argued that the respectable magazine was turning into a picture book. National Geographic still exists today and relies heavily on their photographs. All of these pioneer wildlife photographers were confident, adventurous, and researched animals in order to push forth the emerging practice of professional wildlife photography. Wildlife photography requires a specific set of skills beyond the camera. They need to know how to approach animals, have patience to wait for the animal, and be adventurous and confident, confident, confident enough to get a good shot. Evelyn was practicing wildlife photography right along with these pioneer, other pioneer photographers before it was acknowledged as its own genre. Her temperament and artistic eye had everything it took to be an expert wildlife photographer. This is a picture of Evelyn holding the Bystander magazine from England. There was a contest to see where the magazine could be read in the most unlikely places, and this is the winning entry. Uh, Ewan was mad at her for climbing out on the tree, but she did it anyways. She was a free spirit that allowed no obstacles to hold her back. Uh, moving to Montana, Evelyn took on every aspect of the homestead life herself. She did everything with little to no help from her husband, who was often sick. There's an account of her riding to Miles City in a split skirt that she made, and she made it so it's for easier riding purposes. And when she got to town, there was a group of children laughing at her, and then one of the local authority members came up and said that her dress was inappropriate. But later on in an entry in her journal, she talks about how she doesn't care what other people thought about her. Evelyn leaned on her experience from hunting at a young age with her brothers in England, which would teach her patience and animal behavior. She also bred polo ponies, raised farm animals, had many pets, as well as studied and documented wildlife with her husband. People were documenting wildlife right at this time. We're talking about early 1900s, late 1800s. They were doing it as a hobby, but there was no professional wildlife photographers at the time, what we consider professionals. Evelyn was creating a new genre, and she was changing photography as we know it today. Ewan and Evelyn were published in the Auk Magazine, a scholarly journal that covers everything birds. Evelyn was taking wildlife photographs before they were common in these magazines. Her photographs supplemented Ewan's writings in 1905 and 1906, a year before Shira's images in National Geographic. Although she is not credited in the Auk, it is apparent that her images are the main attraction. And we'll take a look at those in a minute. We're going to look at some other examples in the Auk magazine. So you usually see um, over here on the left, you can see that there's a lot of drawings of the anatomy of birds. There's a lot of graphs and diagrams. And then there's, when there are photographs, they're usually of still lifes of taxidermy animals that is of an actual auk. And these are both from 1905 publications, the same time they were published. This is another photograph from the same journal, same year. I just wanted to compare it to Evelyn's, which we'll look at next. It's in the same exact issue, but the image tends to fall a little flat. It's hard to find the focal point. The subject is really difficult to find. Uh, 
And it just shows that documenting wildlife is challenging. The photographer needs to capture the species in its natural habitat, but also make the image aesthetically pleasing. Here are Evelyn's images. And I took um, an exact copy from out of the journal so we could see the texture compared to what we just looked at, but they're still quite a bit more striking. Evelyn and Ewan studied these eagles for years. She climbed cliffs to document the eaglets every couple weeks. She took pictures and wrote about them. In her photographs, the eagles are clearly the subject, the focal point. She positioned her camera to make sure they are at the center, but the background and the foreground of the images is very strong, giving depth to the image. Their soft feathers juxtaposed against the rothy, rocky Montana cliffs are shown in both images and create texture. And she manipulated the light so the eagles are highlighted. Evelyn treats every portrait, every shot like a portrait. Her composition is studied and the best image is captured. And I have, my next slide is an image of the one on the right to show what it actually looks like in person, not in a grainy journal from 1906. This is their second article from 1906, Nesting of the Herons. In this article, Evelyn is mentioned as exploring with her husband, but not at, credited as the photographer, unfortunately. It does illustrate another amazing photograph shot with proper balance, a clear focal point, strong textures, and creates movement within the photo. Even though the image is rather still, you can the texture of the nest and the way the bird's beak is pointing kind of mimic each other and make your eye move to the right side. Here's a couple more examples of Evelyn's wildlife photography. The composition is full, but it also has a clear focal point. It's not too hard to find the subject with a lot going on in there. There's proper lighting and balance. And again, it's, it's a still photograph, but the, the texture creates movement within the image. Here's a final comparison, and that's Anschutz in the foreground here, Otto Marr, if you remember him. And um, Evelyn's is in the background. And just for you guys to look and notice, she's working at the same time as these guys, and she hasn't had any credit as being a pioneer of wildlife photography, but her images are almost preferable to me anyways. They're clear, and um, they're just, they're really quite beautiful. It draws the eye inward. Evelyn Cameron's wildlife photographs, along with her husband's writings, provide primary evidence of Montana's fauna and flora for over 100 years. <clears throat> From over 100 years ago, excuse me. Her adventurous spirit, confidence, and care for animals make her a pioneer of wildlife photography. Other photographers' wildlife images fall flat compared to Evelyn's. She took time to research the animal, capture the right angle, and to share the essence of each species she documented. Evelyn defined her photographic eye with portraits of families and documenting homesteaders. It launched her natural abilities to become one of the first wildlife photographers. Not to mention that she is also a woman. All right, and here's my, the end. Was there any questions in the house or online that I can help answer or qu clarify anything? Do the animals have to stay still to have a picture? They did. Her shutter speed was actually, we were talking about that yesterday. She actually did have quite a quick shutter speed for what they were had back then that was common. Um, so they still did have to stay pretty still for her to get an, a good image, so she would have to practice and play, a lot, uh, play around with it. But that's why like, she did get to know the species and the area so well, so her researching really helped develop those frames. So this was all just a hobby for her? She was never paid for her wildlife photography? She was not paid for her wildlife photography. I think just 
her and Ewan would bond over going outdoors. He was kind of hard to be around. She writes around it a lot in her diary. But once they were like out in the outdoors and hunting, they really bonded. So it's something they love to do together. And her, there, you know, it pushed them to do something fun. So she didn't really ever look for money in it, I don't think. I think the the reward was being with him and also being publicized in these magazines, even though she didn't get credit. And she's being published before National Geographic, right? Before National Geographic, a year before and then in the same year, 1905-06. This is crazy. <laughs> All right. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Yay. Yay.